take a look at this amazing satellite picture of the blizzard of 2013, you can see why this snowstorm paralyzed some of the most heavily populated areas of this country. The stats are now coming in, and they are very impressive. The worst hit town, Hamden, Connecticut, where they got an astonishing 40 inches. It was a record breaker in Portland, Maine, a place used to snowstorms. They got nearly 32 inches from this one. And to give you a sense of the power of the storm, the winds were as strong as a Category 1 hurricane with gusts up to 83 miles an hour on the Cape. That's Cape Cod. And uh, speaking of Massachusetts, that's where meteorologist Ginger Z is this morning. She's in Boston. Hey, Ginger, good morning. Good morning to you, Dan. You know, Boston was one of the area's hardest hit and record making here. It was the fifth largest snowfall on record in weather history in Boston. And it's not just the snow and wind I was concerned about this morning. That's gone. It's the cold temperatures. Look how cold it is for a lot of these cities that you were just talking about. More than 350,000 still without power and the numbers not pretty as we go into day two of digging out. It was a turbulent tempest, demolishing seawalls in New Hampshire, sending the ocean into Massachusetts homes and forcing people and their belongings out. The nor'easter that immobilized more than 40 million Americans this weekend is now off to sea, but its icy residue is feet deep everywhere, encasing cars and responsible for taking at least nine lives two to carbon monoxide poisoning, including a 12-year-old boy. I'm assuming the son got cold, so the father told him to sit in the car. And then next thing you know, um, the father starts screaming, he's not breathing, he's not breathing. The exhaust pipe had backed up with snow. So you can see the exhaust here coming out, and it's obviously melted away the snow, but that's not always the case. One of the hidden dangers post-blizzard is starting your car and then having carbon monoxide back up. Today, more than 2,000 National Guard troops in four states will be making their rounds to help. From an all-time record snowfall for Portland, Maine of almost 32 inches to the fifth largest snowfall on record in Boston. There's a lot more digging to do. Even if you get just about two feet of snow, it can easily turn into four or five. The storm wasn't the best for business. So you're, have you had a lot of customers through? No, not to today. But there was a blizzard victory when the National Guard made it through the worst of the storm in Worcester, Massachusetts to help deliver this little lady, Noli. Well, I guess there's New Year's babies and stuff like that. Well, mine is a blizzard baby. It's a weekend her parents and countless others will not soon forget. We have another blizzard to talk about, also tornadoes in parts of the country and a slight warm up for the Northeast. I'll have all of that in the national forecast, but for now we go to Gio Benitez, the latest and honorary member of the extreme team, except we need to get him some snow pants. He's in Milford, Connecticut. <laughs> I know, I'm waiting for those snow pants. Ginger, good morning. We are in front of a church here in Milford, but you know, clearly this Sunday morning, nobody's walking in here today. And that's because getting around town, as we found out, isn't easy. In the aftermath of the 2013 blizzard, so many cars were stuck in the snow, even we tried to help move them. That's the story across Connecticut, where at least five deaths are being blamed on the storm, and Governor Dan Malloy is asking President Obama for financial aid. I have uh, filed a request with the President of the United States for um, an emergency declaration. This was a, a record-breaking storm throughout the state. At one point, the storm forced every road in the state to shut down. Even those with the right equipment had no place to go. Here you are trying to dig yourself out. Yes, I am. And you get stuck. I got stuck good. We made the slow journey from Hartford, Connecticut to Milford, which saw a whopping 38 inches in this town of 50,000. Everything from a trash can, a doorway, a no parking sign, all buried beneath the white stuff. Jenny Smith is trying to dig herself out. Do you still like the snow? I do, but it's nice to look at, but not nice to drive in or you know, shovel, <laughs> but to have a nice cup of cocoa. And it is still a mess here in Connecticut. Some 37,000 homes are still without power. Dan Viana.
Thank you, Gio. He looks official with the ABC News chat. Yes. I think he can join the extreme team. Here's the latest on what's running and what's not running on this day after the blizzard. After airports in the Northeast shut down on Friday afternoon with airlines canceling more than 5,300 flights, all three major New York area airports have now reopened with limited service. In Boston, Logan Airport has opened one runway, and Connecticut's Bradley International Airport has just reopened this morning. And on the rails, Amtrak hopes to restore limited train service today between New York City and Boston. Most service is canceled throughout much of New England. Commuter trains are on a limited schedule. And Boston's famous T transit system, shut down by the storm, hopes to have service reopened in time for Monday's commute back to work. That's for those who problem. can commute. Yeah, it's a big problem for Boston if they can't get that open. On the roads in New York, the highways where hundreds of cars were stuck in the snow have now reopened, but one 26 mile stretch of the Long Island Expressway is still closed this morning. And the Travel bans in Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island have now been lifted. Millions of people have a huge headache facing them.